Hey guys, so if you're new here or if you're not, if you want to hear me voice act, head over to our main channel, links down below. And if you don't, this channel's solely for TTS. Um, if you want to know all the details about what's going on, we have a stream up that you can go and watch, but let's just get into the video. So here we go, the story of how I became a psionic tapeworm. First, the campaign. It was an online campaign that happened a few years back. Not too serious, largely because we were all trying out character concepts that sounded fun or we would never try out otherwise house ruling stuff as needed. The GM would allow custom feats items act as long as they fit the character concept and weren't too broken and if they were would try to work out alternatives penalties to unbreak them. A couple of the PC concepts were fetishy, and the GM would occasionally get a bit magical re army but we'd all agreed that if anyone started feeling uncomfortable we'd tone it down. Sex scenes happened sometimes and were mostly fade to black but if those involved wanted to, erp was permitted as long as it was taken to private chats and didn't disrupt the game. Erp that involving major NPCs had to involve the GM, had to wait until the session was over and would never grant you gold xp magic items but you could lose them in the encounter and erps could be canon to the campaign but a brief summary of events had to be given to the GM for approval and he had the final say if it did or did not happen. Next the characters involved in this farce, only two are really relevant, a female barbarian, I think she might not have had a name so let's call her B, and my son, and I remember his name but let's call him P. All the PCs are fairly higher level but given the emphasis on playing fun character concepts we tended to have a mix of very powerful and very weak characters. The idea behind P was a snobbish human scion who believed he should not have to do anything physical. If he could use his powers for something he would, eventually included things like walking and seeing. Also generally hated the inconvenience of having to eat sleep and was hoping to enhance his current body or upgrade to a new one where he didn't have to bother with anything like that. As long as he had a body and could use his powers, he did not care what happened to him. Played support and was horribly unoptimized at first, mostly focusing on utility powers and self-targeting powers to avoid any problems a body might bring. Started with a Matajan feat, Master of Self that let him boost a power's duration to until dismissed at the cost of not regaining the invested PP until it's cancelled. Each usage required GM approval and was limited to personal range effects, mostly survival low level defensive stuff. PP increase varied by GM opinion. He typically had powers like sustenance constantly invested. It seems the idea behind B was hyper aggressive Amazonian fap fantasy. 6 feet 10, muscular, huge tits and hips ass, Sexually aggressive, female, human barbarian that hated clothes, the most she would compromise on was agreeing to wear was magic items, boots, and maybe the skin of one she killed last as a belt, standard neckbud fantasy number 35235 except for the fact that I'm almost positive her player was a woman or at least had a really convincing voice. Really, really liked killing things and doing horrible things to enemies such as eating them or ripping off souvenirs. Sometimes she would kill them first definitely chaotic evil. Would go into detailed descriptions of her depravities. Did occasionally attack other PCs to get what she wanted but would pull her punches as long as they don't go out of their way to piss her off. At this point she did cause the death of few PCs, only once by misjudging how much HP they had left, the rest by charging in before the group was ready. Was tolerated because she wasn't the only that guy character in that campaign was the first time she played one, and just seemed to want the chance to play one. We didn't mind too badly even if she would often cause trouble when in town. And now the story starts. Our heroes having been separated from the group in an incident involving a bridge, a river, and a tribe of dickish goblins are now at a cave entrance at the bottom of a canyon trying to figure out how far downstream we got swept. The cave is small but there is a crack in the back too small to get through that looks like it led somewhere. Now, there's been the standard you're stupid you're weak snark between me and her and she sometimes tries to steal my shiny stone, Sir Crystal, but we typically manage to avoid killing each other. She decides it's a perfect time to try to get my stone again. I respond with bite me and she decides that's a good idea and takes a hunk of flesh out, wasn't too much damage. I promptly decide to teleport away and discover I can't found out much later that she had a bracelet that prevents things like teleportation and planner shifting in a short range, 
In all fairness not even she knew it did that but it did explain some things. B then decides to taunt me by saying people as weak as P would get eaten where she came from and now she's hungry. Noticing the crack I use metamorphosis into a small ooze, I forget what kind, to try and fit. Before I can get there she grapples me and tries to drag me back while taking bites all the while describing how delicious P is and how eagerly she eats him. We pull each other back and forth for a bit, I'm making more progress, only because she's intentionally failing some of the roles, before the GM asks me how big my new form is. He apparently decided that she's taken enough to bites to have finished her meal. Given that I still have a bit more than half my HP, I'm hopeful I can think of a way out. Teleporting still doesn't work and I still don't know why. Her four saves and acid resistance are a bit too high for my current form to melt my way out. I've generally avoided damaging powers and the ones I do have aren't good enough to blast my way out or will kill me in the process, and I'd rather avoid the nuclear option of the rear exit. Ultimately I decide to dismiss my metamorphosis and chest burst my way out. GM call for an opposed strength check. B wins the check but we both take damage from the experience. I use metamorphosis to turn back into the ooze and after a bit of talking with the GM, I'm allowed to use master of self with this instance of metamorphosis. Unable to get out and low on HP and PP, but not taking any more damage, P decides to rest for the time being and try to escape later. Meanwhile, B had taken some string and made a new necklace out of my crystal, hiding the crystal in between her cleavage, climbed out of the canyon, and tracked down the party telling them I died. While I had to sit out for several in-game hours, my crystal's position lets me keep abreast you of my surroundings. The rest of the group kept going on assuming I'd have a new character waiting at the next town. Instead, I had decided to try playing a psionic tapeworm. Sure there were downsides, not being able to pick where we move, a lot of power points invested to keep me alive, only able to look around me up to 40 feet without the use of powers we had ruled that a sign can use is the crystal senses, same with casters and familiars, dispel or anti-magic would fuck me up. And a good chunk of my offensive powers were now only able to target B. Messaged both B's player and the GM and they okayed the arrangement. So why? Because fuck her she has a piss poor will save and I'm a scion, also because it kinda went with the character concept. I could stay in there safely and still communicate interact with the outside, enemies can never sneak around my meat shield now, dominate and sense link if I want to take her for a test drive, and the best part, B would deal with all the annoying parts of taking care of a body. Also, the stupid bracelet still kept me from escaping without killing myself. We eventually figured out what it did but at that point held blown a feat, symbiotic manifestation, letting B count as myself for touch, personal, and ray bolt powers. When I started manifesting again the rest of the party thought I had become an uncarnate or some sort of ghost, we didn't tell them what happened until B started manifesting powers. As the campaign went on wasn't too effective at first but once I got some debuff blasting power and symbiotic manifestation so my old powers would be useful again, we became the major damage dealer for the party. After a few sessions when it became apparent that I was going to keep playing P the GM deemed that I had used some combo of psychometabolic powers to permanently fuse with B and for the sake of bookkeeping the GM had us stated as a gestalt barbarian sign with a permanent schism effect. GM required us to take 2-4 times as much XP to level up depending on how powerful we were compared to the party. No tabletop RPG is complete without beautiful models on the table and the best place to get models is from us. If you check the link below we have everything you could need for your magical realm. Only the finest of big titty wafers here. But if you're not into models or don't play with models we got you covered with subclasses such as the Gachimashi Wizards the Simp Warlock and the North FC Fighter. Also we have started selling 5th edition adventures with our first one featuring Belle Delphine, the succubus that has poisoned the town's well and turned the villagers into simps. If any of that stuff sounds fun to you go ahead and check the link below but let's get back to the video. Time for the magical rearmy bit. Now remember when I mentioned that B was sexually aggressive? Well think standard rape and pillage barbarian only female and B. Everything weaker than her was hers for the taking. If she didn't like someone she would often threaten to rape, 
kill, and eat them, instead of just killing them and eating them if they weren't humanoid. If she did like someone she would still threaten to rape someone if she thought they were weaker than her and at least somewhat attractive. Fade to black involving her and some poor NPC happened at least once in each village we were in and she would often erp if she got the chance. Given that P would be present for every fade to black from then on, B offered to give me a summary so I'd at least know what happened. I had never really participated in any erps, mostly because it would be out of character for my PCs, but I don't really dislike them. When it comes to fetishes, I may not enjoy them but there are very few I find repulsive, so I offered to sit in on some of hers and join in if I wanted to. I was not disappointed. She had quite a sadistic streak and was very fond of Raoul playing out brutal rapes of whatever NPC she chose, often ending in their injury or death. She liked Vor. Truth is so do D. Fairly obvious given how she would describe eating her kills, and what would happen every time she caught a pixie or other tiny humanoid. She was extremely fond of the assimilate power when I got it, especially reflected what she called Vagania Densha, tended to use it to finish off broken NPCs, and one other PC his player wanted to retire, after a night of snoo snoo. She also liked mind control which explained why she did nothing about her poor will save and never really complained whenever I used dominate on her. The only problem I had was her slight fondness for Gura but as long as she didn't go into detail I didn't mind. I wasn't able to do much more than egg her on and make it easier to find and get victims but given that my main fetishes are verism and femdom, especially with tall, muscular women I was already in my magical realm so I mostly watched or provided suggestions. There were a few erps I played a major part of though, we replayed the incident in the canyon, going into more details. A couple of times, I would occasionally dominate sense link her victim and join in, and a joke on the shape of my sir crystal and if it could buzz led to it being her go to solution when she couldn't snatch an NPC. This led to another joke on where she keeps it given she almost always had no clothes much less pockets. The campaign eventually continued on to epic levels ending with use killing a few gods and of course B8 the corpses. In the campaign epilogue we were the reason as to why there are so few gods left. All in all quite fun playing it would have never done it had it not been online. Well guys hope you enjoy today's video. We are going to assume you have if you have stayed to the end. Consider subscribing and clicking the notification bell if you really enjoyed it to stay up to speed with any and all new videos. Also check out the links below to our shop for some fat ass titties and our sponsor Rural and be sure to use a promo code at checkout so they know we sent you and you'll get 10% off. And until next time.